Joining us now over the phone on the Alex Few Show is former Houston Astros play-by-play announcer Bill Brown. Bill, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to call in to the Alex Few Show. My pleasure to be on with you guys and Alex, and uh, I'm sure that uh, <laughs> the Astros are kind of the talk of the world right now because things are a little upside down in their world at the moment. They are, and we'd like to talk about that with you. But first, what made you want to get into the field of sports broadcasting? I was one of those rare guys who at age 14 realized I would never be anything as an athlete and wanted to be as close to baseball as I could and uh, just sort of uh, oriented my whole career toward becoming a sports broadcaster. Mm -hmm. Probably the same with you guys, right? Right, yeah. (laughs) Realized we weren't going to be college athletes, so now we're doing sports (laughs) broadcasting. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah, but it's a great profession, I may say that, and... uh, uh, it, it's, of course, the unpredictability of it, as illustrated by the Astros in the World Series, is a part of it. But it's not brain surgery, as Larry Durker mm-hmm. wrote in his book, This Ain't Brain Surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Bill. Is there a specific moment that made you realize you want to become a baseball commentator? Not a specific moment, but I, I just um, probably, as you guys did, uh, grew up listening to the game and and in my time of course many many decades ago um there was one tv game a week the saturday uh baseball game Mm -hmm. of the week and uh so we listened on radio and we just grew so enamored with the sport and the rhythms of it and i grew up in missouri listening to harry Carey and jack buck two hall of fame broadcasters and they just made the game come alive for a kid who had tried to play baseball and realized how hard it was and how much uh, we looked up to the Orlando Cepedas and the Bob Gibsons of the world. It was uh, really an attraction to try to get there in some fashion. And uh, maybe it would have been as assistant trainer uh, with some kind of medical degree, but it was broadcaster, and that's what I always wanted. Now, back in the 1970s, you worked with the Cincinnati's Reds broadcast. What was the transition like going from the Reds into the Astros broadcast? There were five years in between when I was not in baseball. I was just doing various sports casting jobs. And I really had not applied for other jobs in baseball because they're so difficult to get. You know, there are only uh, 30 uh, TV play by play guys primarily who do this in the world. And that's a rather daunting. <laughs> A piece of mathematics to try to break your way through. So um, the odds are that you won't you won't get it. And uh, I was content to do other jobs in sports, but the Houston job came open, and I had known the general manager in Cincinnati with the Reds, Dick Wagner, and he was the general manager in Houston at the time. Uh, happened upon a, an interview with him in Los Angeles, where I was working at the time, and. Then he called me a couple of months later and said, hey, our job in Houston is open if you want to apply. And and that's where the process started. But there was no guarantee, and there never is in sports. It was worth a shot, and it happened to work out. Throughout your career, has your preparation for games changed at all? I don't think it has. I think there's a, a basic need to uh, ground oneself in the fundamentals of knowing both teams and all the players on the field and the managers and coaches and general managers and, and people of that nature. Um, in terms of passing along different details as the game unfolds to the broadcast audience, but no, I, I think there was always a need. You know, if you're if you're naturally brilliant, like a Bob Costas. Mm. or a Joe Buck, then you retain these things. But uh, for most of the rest of us, it's a matter of reviewing, constantly reviewing and and going through all the various uh, pieces of prep work you can possibly do to be ready for a game because it's just so unpredictable. You never know what's going to happen in a baseball game. And the more prepared you are, the better job you would do at passing that along to your audience. Now, Bill, let's talk Houston Astros right now. They're down 2-0 in the World Series, have Game 3 on Friday night. Do you think they can turn things around and come back to win this World Series? It would be historic if they did that. I don't think any team has ever lost its first two games at home after winning 60 out of 81 home games. (laughs) (laughs) Pitching uh, two two, uh, great pitchers like Verlander and Cole and gone on the road and come back to win the World Series. So we'll put that out there because everybody knows that and how difficult it is. However, 
you know, the Astros were overwhelming uh, betting favorites in Las Vegas, right? So I yeah. think the biggest favorites since 07, something like that. Uh, and everyone expected them to blow away the Nationals. I, I always had a very healthy respect for the Nationals. And not because of the number of games they won and they had a horrible start, but just because of the way they came on at the end. And that mm. can be so important in a short series. And they had a lot of rest after... Uh, beating the Cardinals, however, that can sometimes be a negative. But the way they've played the game, these first two games, the way they've gone into Minute Maid Park and performed at a very high level, I think creates a lot of respect, and rightfully so, for what they've done. So this would be probably a historic type of comeback. But uh, I wouldn't write the Astros off at least taking it deeper than, you know, I, I mean, to be swept would be certainly a big embarrassment. Mm-hmm here in Houston, uh, but we just, it's so unpredictable, it's so hard to say where things are going from one game to the next, and even within a certain game, I think there's a chance they could push this pretty deep, you know, six, seven games, mm-hmm. something like that, and at least make it a respectable showing from what their expectations were. Now, one of the main talking points from this World Series has been how good the Astros' rotation is on paper with Garrett Cole, Justin Verlander, and Zach Greinke. Now, I don't know the last time that I've seen a rotation that good on paper, Bill. And for you, have you? when's the last time you've seen a rotation this good in a World Series matchup? Well, I, I don't know that I have. And, and certainly Detroit, you know, when Verlander and Scherzer were there together, um, that was a great rotation at that point. Um and, you know, you go back to the late 60s when you had Detroit and, and St. Louis. You had uh, Lolich and uh, Gibson and uh, McLean and, and pitchers of that nature. They, that was a great rotation. The Dodgers had some, you know, Sandy Koufax and Drysdale and those guys in the mid-60s. But this, historically, is one of the best rotations ever. However, uh, you know, in a short series, a lot of things can happen that did not happen during the season. You know, Cole had given up five runs in a game since May. Right. So, and, and that's, you know, it's unusual, but after the long winning streak he had, is it is it going to continue forever? It is not. So in that sense, it maybe is not all that unusual. Bill, what is your favorite baseball memory of your lifetime? <laughs> wow. Well, I happen to be in um, Boston, when Carlton Fisk hit the home run against the Reds when I was mm-hmm. with Cincinnati in 1975, which was one of the iconic moments. Mm-hmm. But yeah, my favorite moment was when, after he won that game in extra innings, the Reds came back and won game seven on the road the next night. And I, I think that was probably my favorite moment because the Reds had been close. They had been um, in World Series in uh, 70 and 72 and had not won. They had, they had a stretch of decades uh, without winning a World Series. So I, I think those breakthrough moments like that, and then, of course, in 2017, when the Astros beat the Dodgers, yes. was their first World Championship ever in 56 years. So that's another one. But those those two, I think we tend to remember the World Series champions, of course, as our top moments. And those, those two, I think, would rank uh, very much at the top for me. So definitely both great highlights right there. And we're going to be going into something that Alex likes to do. He likes to do the fast five quick questions where we just kind of <laughs> ask you some like fun questions here on the show. So the first one is, what is your go-to snack before broadcast? <laughs> coffee. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> lots, lots of coffee because Definitely. it's going to be these days probably a four-hour game. Yeah, yeah. got to stay awake. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and the trick to broadcasting, as you know, is and I caught Joe Buck in the men's room. Uh, during one of these World Series games in 2017, you have about 60 seconds to get to the men's room and back. So you don't want to uh, drink a whole lot of fluids before the game immediately. Right. It has to be a couple hours or an hour before, and then you shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Bill, what would you say your favorite MLB stadium is? I, I think on the road, I, I would say Minute Maid Park because mm-hmm. I love it, but on the road, I've loved at t Park in San Francisco. Beautiful I think, uh, yeah, just just gorgeous. But I like Camden Yards in Baltimore. There are some others too, but I, I'll go with uh, AT&T mm-hmm. in San Fran. It's a good stadium right there. And who is your favorite current MLB player? Jose Altuve would have to be the man. And I, you know a lot about him. You've seen it right. nightly. 
on the postseason. But and the reasons are beyond what he's done on the field. He's been a league MVP. He's been a batting champion three times. But it's his humility is mm. the uh, really the top ranking reason for me. Um, he he doesn't like talking about himself. He's extremely fully dedicated. He came from a poor background, signed for fifteen thousand dollars. So he is a tremendous role model for kids, and that would be the reason. Yeah, we saw in his walk-off home run to send the Astros to the World Series, he didn't really showboat too much, just kind of ran the bases. And that's one of the things you like to see. He's very serious, and you know he gets the job done when it matters, too. And what would you say, right, Bill? Showboats. Yeah, and what would you say uh, you miss the most about baseball now being retired? <laughs> well, I have the best of both worlds. I, I don't really miss that much of anything because I get to fill in on radio and do about 10 games. And people say, well, don't you miss doing the World Series? Well, we never did on TV. I was the TV broadcaster, so mm-hmm. um, they, they shut the local broadcasters down, as you know, because right. uh, Fox takes over the World Series, So, and even the playoff game. So that, that was um, personally disappointing. Of course, all of us know when we sign up for this that we're not going to be doing playoff games. Um, and, and the radio guys get to do World Series, so all the way through, uh, they get that tremendous thrill. And that's what you live for, is those big games. But, no, I, I'm very happy with the way things worked out, so no problem there. Mm-hmm. Last question. What made you retire from calling games? <laughs> I kind of hit a wall on the preparation. Um, there, For me, I, I wasn't brilliant. I wasn't um, a Joe Buck or an Al Michaels or anybody in that, that neighborhood. So I had to work all day to get ready for a game. And uh, I just hit a wall when it came to all that work and all that preparation that I had to have to be at that level that I needed to be. So I, I just thought, well, let's let's go ahead and retire and enjoy some good moments with the family uh, because my work right. is not what it should be right now. Well, Bill, we'd like to thank you for calling into the Alex Few Show and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. See if the Astros can turn things around in the World Series. Thank you, guys. Good luck to both of you. Thank you very much. Have a great night.